Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 49. So, we have been discussing about uh, the general perturbation theory. So, in that context, we are going to discuss about the parameter variation. So, if you remember last time we took multiple body uh, problem. So, uh, and in that we derived the equation r double dot this equal to minus del u plus r where u is the two body potential function and r is the perturbation potential function. So, if we are only dealing with the gravitational force, so in that case you can get the r, but if in the case say if, uh, we have the aerodynamic force also present, so it cannot be represented in terms of the potential function, because it is a dissipative force, it is not conservative, gravitational force is conservative. And therefore, for that also we need to uh, treat it little separately, but for the time being what we assume that this is our equation given where u is the two body potential this is important to remember and r is the perturbation potential. Okay. Now, if we need to solve this problem, so we know of course, that we can write it like this. Equal to minus del r. So, th this appears in a usual way like if we have the equation of the spring mass system and say we write it like this. So, in where this r and this r they are not the same, this is simply the forcing function. So, if we have this kind of system, so what will be the solution of this? So, of course, we are aware of that the solution to d a square x by d t a square plus k x equal to 0, this will be normally a sinusoidal solution we will get for this as we will uh, do little later. But what will be the solution for this? So, there are various methods for solving this problem, but there is one method that is called the method of parameter variation as written here. Okay. And especially in the case where the parameters are varying slowly, so that kind of case we are going to treat. So, already if now if we have the basic function r double dot equal to minus mu by r cube r, which we have written in terms of potential. So, once we write in terms of potential, this gets reduced to minus del u and if there is one more term, so in that case r q r and plus say some function we write here as f, where f is a function and if we write p, so that means it is a perturbation force, perturbation and we are looking for solution to this problem. 
So, we have satellite here moving in an orbit around the earth this is your earth and the satellite is moving around the earth and there is another planet and earth is moving around the sun some planet or the sun or the moon it is there and that is going to affect directly the motion of the satellite directly indirectly whatever. So, already we have written the equation for that. So, because of the earth the equation will be governed by this, but this is a very simple one. In fact, our earth is oblate and because of that we have also the perturbation of term appearing it will appear here in this place once we take the shape of the earth to be oblate size uh, oblate shaped. So, in that case this extra term will also appear. So, this we will take care of uh, as we progress first we will learn what is the parameter variation method and thereafter we will come to that. So, this perturbation due to oblateness of earth perturbation due to other planets all these things will be present in the system. If p is due to other heavenly bodies and then due to aerodynamic forces it can be aerodynamic and radiation forces or sobletness and then can be the Lorentz force So, whatever the forces that is a existence of the uh, possibility of existence of other whatever the forces are there. So, we can add here in this place in this list. So, with this we are given that r double dot this equal to minus del u plus r. Okay, so, here we have uh, u equal to 2 body potential. this equal to minus g or mu by r usually we write, but this is minus g times m is the main body and small m is the smaller body divided by r and r is the perturbation potential as we have written earlier. Okay, so, this sets the scene for what we need to do. Okay, we have to solve this problem to in order to get uh, the uh, trajectory of the satellite. So, actually what is happening that if you remember that if we have a perfectly spherical and uniform mass body and around that one satellite is going in the circular orbit or elliptical orbit. So, this we have called as the Keplerian orbit orbit this is the two body problem where two particles are involved. But if the your main body it is a not a spherical or it is a non of non uniform density then the orbit will not represent in cannot be represented in terms of the Keplerian orbit means you have a e i capital omega small omega and theta these were the 6 parameters of the system. So, in that case 
in the Keplerian orbit all of them were constant except theta which was a function of time, theta was a function of time which is true anomaly, but where the perturbation is present as in the case represented by this particular equation. So, in that case this trajectory will not look like this, but rather the trajectory will evolve. So, here it will look like this ok, instead of this the orbit is changing ok, it is not going in a closed form, it is a open orbit and uh, it will vary over a period of time like this and then A will change, E will change, I will change capital omega which is the uh, mm, what we call as the nodal angle then argument of perigee all these will change, uh, theta of course, it is a changing already. So, uh, the solution to this equation this will give us the true orbit. In the true orbit the velocity at this point this is the true orbit shown by this is true orbit, true orbit and this is your Keplerian orbit where A E i capital omega small omega theta these are present and out of this these are constants these 5 are constants. Now, in this orbit if we assume that say if I assume that the actual orbit is the true orbit is going like this, this is the true orbit and here there is the center of attraction mass m is there and some small mass it is moving here in this orbit which I show. So, this mass is moving in this orbit and uh, the presence of other planets other heavenly bodies it will perturb the orbit and because of this it it is going like this what we are calling as the true orbit. So, in the true orbit given at any point okay, we have the position it is x y z and x dot y dot z dot if it is available okay. say in the true orbit these are the position and velocity may be with respect to the main body as we have done earlier. So, if we get this x y and z, so immediately using this we can calculate a e i capital omega small omega and theta as we have done for the Keplerian orbit, but here in this case we call this as the osculating osculating orbital elements or orbital parameters elements slash parameters osculating means kissing. So, what does it mean? It implies that suppose that v is the velocity here. So, v this will be function of x y z x dot y dot z dot it is a changing with position and the components is indicated here. So, with position this v will change here also if you look here in this orbit. So, here also the depending on whether it is elliptical or circular if it is circular v remains the same, but if it is elliptical it keeps changing. So, this change is a different issue once it comes back to the same it again the satellite will come back to the same position, but here in this case as you can see that satellite is not going to come back to the same position because of the perturbation it is a changing all the parameters. So, in the true orbit there is a velocity and using this velocity at any point I can draw a circle or ellipse about that point. not circle say if, uh, it will be a, an ellipse because if it is a circle the then uh, the velocity has to satisfy like uh, m g by 
r square times m this must be satisfied by m b square by r if it is circular orbit. So, without stating whether it is a circular elliptical or whatever it may be if you have the particle at this point and this is the corresponding velocity. So, using this velocity you can get these elements though the satellite is not going to follow this route, but rather it is going to take to this path okay, because of the presence of other heavenly bodies. Okay. And this we are calling as the true orbit while this we call as the osculating orbit. So, osculating orbit will exist at one point, another point you go another osculating orbit will be there, but this is only at a particular instant of time. Its existence is only for a particular instant of time, at other time it will not be there in this position. While the Keplerian orbit if given the same velocity it will exist for all the time. This is the difference between the Keplerian orbit and the osculating orbit. Both are got uh, we get uh, A E I etcetera in the same way, but in the case of the Keplerian orbit you get the heavenly body repeat the same orbit again and again, but in the case of osculating orbit we are just getting an orbit, but the particle is not following that path. You should get this point that using this we can get this, but particle is not going to go in this orbit and this we are calling as the osculating orbit. And the, why this is happening? We, this is because of the this perturbation term r which is present here in this place. So, this is the concept of osculating orbit. Now, our job is to solve the, the problem which we have written as r double dot equal to minus del u minus del r. So, under the perturbation orbital change can be characterized by by the following characterized or classified can be classified classified slash characterized by the following statements. It can be secular orbit secular changes this implies trajectory grows with time this is non periodic this is a non periodic term and the other one it's a periodic term periodic long time variation so these are the two things present and beside this we will have the short time periodic variation also present so circular implies say if, uh, if we plot some uh, capital omega and versus t so in the case we know uh, that if there is no variation in capital omega. So, capital omega should be constant. So, it should come like a straight line okay, for Keplerian orbit. If there is no perturbation, so in that case capital omega plot with respect to time it appears like this, but in the case this is a circular perturbation. So, it will appear like this. 
secular. It may be non-linear, it may be linear, whatever it is possible. Okay. In the case of the periodic variation, so periodic variation it may ride over the secular one, it may appear like this okay. or periodic variation if we list say the periodic variation can appear like this also. Okay. Above this if we write the short periodic terms, so short periodic terms will appear like this. So, in a signal you might have noticed that if we have a signal and say if, uh, we plot here some y or, uh, or some voltage signal in electrical engineering voltage signal in different field different kind of signals can be present. So, we can have the actual signal which may be periodic it may be varying and above that the noise writes. So, noise it is a non periodic it is a di different kinds of noise can be present. So, depending on the uh, nature of the system. So, it is a showing that over a periodic long periodic term the it may be in the form of a short periodic or it may be totally a um, white noise whatever uh, it is a possible. Okay, so, for this issue we do not take here our main concern is about this point which we are discussing that the orbit can change in a circular way or in a long time periodic variation way okay. and short time periodic variation may also be present. So, the periodic uh, the osculating orbit we will define now with this introduction. is defined as the defined as the Keplerian orbit at any point any point so uh, osculating orbit is defined as the keplerian orbit at any point any point on the true trajectory or the true orbit whatever you write on the true trajectory. So, this is the true trajectory on that any point we take so defined as the Keplerian orbit which is tangential to the true trajectory. So, that means here if v is the velocity, so v velocity is common to both the true trajectory and also the Keplerian orbit. So, but the Keplerian orbit it will look like this and if it is a Keplerian orbit say v the given the velocity v. So, I can get a Keplerian orbit at this point. So, how it is differing from the osculating orbit the Keplerian orbit osculating orbit will be present only at a particular instant of time as soon as we take the next instant of time. So, the true uh, this uh, osculating trajectory it will differ now the osculating trajectory at this point it will look like this so, here I am taking this point ok. I go to the next point I take next point here this is the center of attraction. So, at this point trajectory will may look like this at this point it will be tangential. 
but here it is a very distorted figure the variation does not take so fast ok it is a slow variation and here it is appearing that within a very short distance so much of change has taken place this is not a true representation this is just for uh, exemplifying uh, this particular problem ok. So, we have here this point and this point and this point. So, at this three points three orbits are shown. So, these are the osculating orbit, but our Keplerian orbit is this one where here the particle will keep going or the body will keep going again and again over the same route again and again. So, that we call as the Keplerian orbit. So, there is a difference between the osculating orbit and the Keplerian orbit in the sense that osculating orbit exists only at a particular instant of time while the Keplerian orbit will be forever because it is a two body problem. So, it will be always with respect to that particular body in the center of attraction it will always be present and it will follow the same route because there is no perturbation. Okay, so, <coughs> to understand what is the parameter variation method we consider one problem. parameter variation. So, here we take one simple problem say x double dot is a scalar problem x double dot plus x equal to r t. If we have this problem, this is a vector problem because it is applicable in three dimension while here it is only in x. So, the solution to this if the parameters are varying, so it can be written as r equal to r and it will be function of then t and then the orbital constants which will be varying over a period of time c 4, c 5. C 6. These are the 6 orbital parameters. So, with time they are varying. So, this is your giving the true trajectory. If we get the equation for the r in vector terms, so we get the true trajectory how it is a varying in the inertial space or with respect to the uh, main body because this equation we are writing with respect to all the time it can be also with respect to the battery center. Okay. So, here in this place dr by d t this can be written as do r by do t and then do r by do c 1 times d c 1 by d t or dou c 1 by dou t we can write dou c 1 by dou t dou r by dou c 2 we are applying the partial differential and so on. So, the this is representing velocity which we also write as r dot this is r dot. So, r dot equal to v equal to dr by dt. So, the contribution is not only due to the variation with respect to time, but also due to the variation of the parameters which are involved there. 
and we are going to utilize this information for solving this kind of problem. Okay, so uh, we will start with the next lecture. Okay, we will stop here. Uh, thank you very much.